Peter Oldner and welcome to the channel. Here are the two questions for today. First of all, should I upgrade the cylinder heads on my Cathedral Port LS? The second question is, should I just port the stock heads or should I step up to aftermarket heads? Which one is better? Okay guys, let's jump right in. We're gonna answer the following question. Should I upgrade the cylinder heads on my LS? The answer is sometimes yes. Now, should I do a set of aftermarket CNC ported, you know, upgraded heads, or should I just port the original stock heads? And that's a great question, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to answer that here. I ran a test way back in 2010, where we ran all of the aftermarket heads that I could get my hands on. We ran a stock head, in this case it was a 241, actually an OG 5.7 LS1 head, and a set of ported 243, you know, the super cool LS6 heads. The guys from Total Engine Airflow did those up completely. So we have aftermarket heads. We have a ported factory head from people that really know what they're doing because that's the problem with porting a set of stock heads is that they vary dramatically in how much airflow the guys get and how much power they translate to. So the guys from Total Engine Airflow, this was a really good set of heads. So a ported, a ported set of 243 heads worked out very well, especially when they applied all their magic to it. There are a lot of other guys that do very good work on those as well, but there's also guys that do substandard work. So this was a good example of what you can get from a set of ported stock heads. And we're gonna compare those to the stock 241 heads and then the set of Airflow Research 245 heads. And we'll get into that too. I probably wouldn't have picked those heads, but that's what they supplied for the test. So let's jump right in. First of all, we need to take a look at something very important and that is our test motor. You see, if we were to run the same test, a set of stock heads and ported stock heads and aftermarket heads, on say a stock 4.8 liter, we would get very little difference in power. Not because the aftermarket heads don't add a lot more power or even the ported heads don't add a lot more power. They have a lot more potential. In fact, these heads, especially the airflow research heads, will support over 700 horsepower. So they have enough airflow to do that. The problem isn't the cylinder head in this case. They wouldn't add power on a stock 4.8. The problem is you don't have enough motor. <laughs> the 4.8, even with a stock head, that stock head already has enough airflow to support the level of the power output in stock trim. And that's very important. You have to have, you have to have enough motor and the more motor you have, the better off a head swap is actually going to be. So let's jump right in and take a look. So we built Built a, I built a stock motor or I built up a stock motor so that it would better able to take advantage of all the extra airflow offered by both the ported and aftermarket heads. To that end, we started out with a six liter, in this case it was an LQ4, an iron six liter block, but we upgraded it to 408 status. So we increased the bore and the stroke. We stepped up to a 4030 bore and a four inch stroke producing the 408 cubic inches. We used a dish, 10cc dish piston with this to have a reasonable compression ratio. A flat top would add obviously another full point of compression. We also added a healthy camshaft. In this case, it was a comp cam. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the specs on that. It was a 624 lift. 239, 247 degree duration split in. And remember, we put a forged piston in this that also had, not only did it have a dish, but it also had valve reliefs to allow us to work with this kind of camshaft because this is much bigger than will fit with stock piston to valve clearance if this was just a six liter. So a 239, 247 degree duration split at 114 degree lobe separation angle. We ran stock LS3 injectors in this. We had engine seven eighths headers. We also had 60, 64 pounds of fuel pressure. We also had a set of uh, 172 roller rockers on this. We ran all of these cylinder heads when we ran this with a with a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. As I said, engine 78 headers. We wanted to make sure that the induction and the exhaust system didn't otherwise limit the power potential of what these heads had to offer. We ran all of them. We we uh, adjusted the air fuel on all of these to optimize power. We adjusted the timing. Almost all of these heads wanted to run at best at 29 or 30 degrees of total timing at the power peak. The one exception is we did run a set of 317 heads and they made uh, best power with one or two degrees more timing. Bigger chamber than all the ones that we tested and also not as good a chamber design. So it wanted a little bit more timing or required a little bit more timing. Also, it's important to note that I specified in this test that all of the cylinder heads have a 64cc chamber the 
ported and massaged because they did the chamber work on the 243 heads as well. Those turned out to be 63 cc's. The 245 heads turned out to be 64 cc's. And the stock 241, because we wanted to start out with a bone stock set of cylinder heads, we could have chosen anything. But the 241 heads, kind of middle of the road, they make more power than a 317, but not quite as much as a 799 or 243. But those were 68 cc chambers. So we started out our test with a stock 241 head. They work very well. We produced 549.6 or 550 horsepower and then 517 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see we started out with a stock head with our big stroker. It made pretty good power. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we added our performance heads. Now let's take a look at both at our test motor and the dyno results with our stock 241 OG57 LS1 heads. Now we need to take a look at kind of a comparison between what happens when we put an aftermarket set of ported heads, in this case a set of Airflow Research 245s. We tested many others and you'll see similar kinds of things, but also compare that to a set of ported stock heads and our stock heads were 243 because with the ported stock heads, we wanted to start out with basically the best stock head that you could start out with in terms of cathedral port stuff. And then they, the guys from Total Engine Airflow had a really good stage two program where they increased the valve size, they went up to on the uh, TEA heads, they went up to a 2055 and a 1575 valve package. As I said, it was a 63 uh, or 63cc chamber. The the improvements in flow, they went up from around 245 to 250 CFM, depending on which head we're testing. But the um, the ported heads flowed 330 CFM on the intake and 231 CFM on the exhaust. This compares to the Airflow Research that flowed uh, 352 C CFM and 242 on the exhaust. So a little bit more than the ported heads did. And, and, and as we'll see, that translated into power. The 245 heads from Airflow Research had even bigger valves in it. So that would, could explain some of the the increased airflow. They had a 216 and a 1.6 valve package. So more like a rec port head kind of combination on these 245 heads. So we see a big change in airflow. And obviously we have a change in port volume as well, but let's see if that translated directly into horsepower. So this was the power output with our stock combination with our stock 241 head, 550 horsepower and 517 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added the uh, TEA LS6 heads. Remember CNC ported bigger valves and stuff. And we did indeed see a big change in power. So we went up from 550 horsepower to over 600. 607 horsepower. So basically we picked up 57 horsepower from the head swap. So as I said, this is a good gain in power from porting a set of stock heads. If the stock heads that you happen to have are 243 heads, they also have programs for other stuff uh, for the 706 heads and probably for the 241 heads as well. Because way back when, when Brian Tooley owned all of this, they did a lots of programs for lots of the factory heads because before you before the aftermarket jumped in and said, hey, we're going to make all of these different uh, cathedral port CNC heads, the stock heads were kind of what you had to work with. So everybody was porting them and they obviously did a fairly good job. So this was a good program from the guys at Total Engine Airflow and obviously it made good power. We know that these heads with 330 CFM will support even more power than this. So if you had a wilder combination with more compression, this was about 10 and a half to one. We had more compression and more, and, you know, a, an intake manifold that allow us to rev even higher. All those things we could take advantage of uh, every bit of airflow that these heads had to offer. So now, now this begs the question, how does this compare to a set of airflow research heads? And not surprisingly, given the guys from Airflow Research know what they're doing. And every time I've tested the Airflow Research stuff, on whether it's been on a small block Ford or a big block or the LS stuff, they've always seemed to work fairly well. Here's what happened when we ran the 245 heads. And they did do, they did indeed make more power than the ported stock heads, uh, and they probably cost more than the stock heads do. So again, what, what, what normally it comes down to, but let's talk about the power numbers first, then we can talk about the price. The stock head or the ported uh, Airflow Research 245 heads made 623 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 557 foot pounds yeah 557 foot pounds so they were a little bit better kind of basically everywhere a lot better obviously than the stock head the stock head we went from 550 to 622 
623, and so that was a big gain in power from, from the head swap, and something that justifies putting a ported head on there, so we made good power. But now the question is, what is the price difference between, and you guys are going to have to look this up because I don't have this information, the cost difference between porting your stock heads, which we got good power from, and then the cost of an aftermarket head like this Airflow Research head that I'm demonstrating here. What is the cost difference between those two? And if there is a cost difference and one costs more than the other, let's say that the aftermarket head costs more, is how much more it costs, is that power gain worth that extra amount. And I can't decide that, only you guys can. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from all this conversation between getting stock heads, ported stock heads, or full CNC aftermarket heads? In the end, as is usually the case, it all comes down to cost versus the power gains that you get. And as we showed, you can get a big jump in power on the right combination with a set of ported stock heads. Those 243 heads are a good example. There's lots of good people out there. We use Total Engine Airflow, but you know, Texas Speed, and there's a West Coast Cylinder Head. There's a lot of good guys. And, and given the fact that these stock LS heads have been around for a long time now, there's lots of guys that have taken the time to figure out how to make them flow. Even your average home porter does a pretty good job. The question is, now there's a difference in power between a ported stock head and an aftermarket head. And the question is, is there a difference in power? Now I tried to look this up online, but it said call for pricing. So you guys are gonna have to do a little bit of research yourself and find out which one of these costs more, the aftermarket head or the ported stock head. And then if there is a difference in price, you're gonna have to decide, okay, there is a difference in power. Does that extra power justify the difference in cost? That's all up to you. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.